One of the biggest fears people have is being buried alive. In this video, I'll be sharing three stories of people who were actually buried alive. Hang around to see how many, if any, were able to survive. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Derek, and if you've seen my videos before, welcome back. If this is your first time here, it's great to have you. If you enjoy stories that sound too crazy to be true, but are actually real, you're in the right place. And the good news is I upload new videos each and every week. To make sure you don't miss any, subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll know when new crazy and true stories are uploaded. All right, let's jump into the first story. Steve Small was a 39-year-old successful businessman living in Illinois. Part of his business was to buy properties and renovate them. On September 2, 1987, he received a phone call really early in the morning, around 12.30 a.m. The person calling him told him they were a local police officer and that a small burglary had just happened at a property he was working on renovating. Of course, Steve was concerned, but he was grateful the police were involved and alerted him to what had happened. He threw on some clothes, hopped in his car, and headed to the property so he could survey the damages and see if everything was okay. What Steve didn't realize, through no fault of his own, was that the phone call he had just received wasn't actually from a police officer. In fact, his renovation property hadn't even been broken into. He was being lured into a situation where he was going to be abducted. At 3.30 a.m., about three hours after Steve had received the call and then left to check everything out, his wife Nancy received a call. The person said four words to Nancy that no wife ever wants to hear, which were, we have your husband. The sound quality of the call was really poor, and Nancy had a difficult time making everything out that was being said to her. She did faintly hear her husband telling her that he had been handcuffed and that he was inside of a box underneath the ground. Steve then told his wife that he wasn't going to be freed until his captors were paid $1 million in cash. Steve's abductors had put him in a wooden box and buried him about three feet underground. They had given him a small breathing tube and some water, which indicated that they were planning on letting him live if they received the ransom money. The person who called then got back on the phone and told Nancy not to report the situation to the police. However, after getting off the phone, Nancy did report the kidnapping to police. Their home phone line was tapped so that any more incoming calls could be recorded and a location could possibly be determined. Well, that same evening, just after 5 p.m., the same person called Nancy to ask her how much of the $1 million she had collected. Nancy and other family members were more than willing to pay the ransom money to make sure Steve wasn't harmed, but the issue was that the poor phone call quality from the captors made it difficult for Nancy and others who were listening in on the calls to determine where the ransom money was supposed to be left. After receiving five calls the day Steve was kidnapped, the last being at 11.50 p.m., authorities were able to track the calls to gas stations. On the fifth and final phone call, the captor accused Nancy of reporting the matter to police and said that he now refused the ransom money. Just minutes after the last phone call, a police officer saw one of the captors driving with their trunk partly open. Based on the location data they received from phone tapping, as well as surveillance, they knew that this vehicle belonged to the kidnappers. A man and woman were arrested for kidnapping Steve. They confessed and led officers to the site where Steve was buried. The officers began digging and uncovered a six foot by three foot wooden box with Steve's deceased body inside. Inside the box was an automotive battery, a gallon of water, some candy bars, gum, and a flashlight. The breathing tube that had been given to Steve was too long to be adequate. A medical examiner stated that the cause of death was suffocation and that he wouldn't have survived more than four hours in the box. This meant that Steve had been deceased for several hours before he was found. In 1937, Angel was 19 years old and living in France. One day when he was out riding his motorcycle, he was involved in a serious wreck. The force of the wreck threw him from his bike and he went headfirst into a brick wall. 
This happened with so much force that his face was completely disfigured to the point that his parents weren't even allowed to see his body. Medical workers tried to detect a pulse from Angel, but there was nothing, and doctors declared him dead and he was buried three days later. After Angel was buried, a local insurance company opened an investigation into the accident. As part of the investigation, his body was exhumed two days after he had been buried. People couldn't believe that his body was warm and showed signs that he might still be alive. Doctors were surprised to discover that Angel's accident hadn't actually killed him, but had put his body into a deep coma. He had been kept alive due to his body's diminished need for oxygen. Because of the injuries he received in the accident, especially to his face, Angel needed several surgeries and rehabilitation. Incredibly, he made a complete recovery and even became somewhat of a celebrity in France. People then and people now still find it hard to believe how amazing this story is and how lucky Angel was that the insurance company opened an investigation. If his body hadn't been exhumed, no one would have known that he was still alive. Angel went on to create a certain type of coffin that was designed to sustain human life. The coffin was reported to have a small refrigerator, a toilet, a small oven, a radio transmitter, and even a library. He took the coffin all around France to show people his idea. He even demonstrated its abilities by being buried in it for two days, the same amount of time that he had actually been buried alive. His experience has been called the most remarkable 20th century instance of premature burial. In 2018, Rosangela Santos was rushed to the hospital after experiencing severe fatigue. She spent a week at the hospital where she suffered from two cardiac arrests. She went into septic shock following cardiac arrest and was declared dead at the hospital. Rosangela was only 37 years old and was married with no children. The day after being declared dead, her body was laid to rest in an above-ground tomb. Eleven days after being laid to rest, people living near the cemetery began hearing screams and bangs coming from the cemetery. At first, they thought the sounds were coming from children messing around, but when the screaming and banging continued, they realized it was coming from Rosangela's tomb. The people that experienced this alerted her family to what they had heard coming from the tomb. By the time family members gathered at the tomb, everything was quiet. There were no more screams or bangs. The family still wanted to investigate the situation, especially since more than one person claimed to hear the sounds coming from her grave. They smashed open the tomb and pulled her casket out. When they lifted the lid and looked inside, they immediately realized that things weren't right. Neither Rosangela nor her casket looked the same inside as it had 11 days earlier when she was buried. Cotton that had been placed in her ears and nostrils had fallen out. Her body felt warm to the touch and she had visible injuries on her hands and forehead. These were injuries she didn't have before and it appeared as though they had been caused by her fighting and struggling to get out. Inside the casket, nails on the lid had been pushed upwards as if she had worked to remove them to get the lid off. There were also scratches and blood on the inside. It's hard to imagine just how terrifying this would have been. Rosangela had struggled and fought to free herself for who knows how long, and unfortunately help didn't make it there in time. After the whole ordeal, local police opened an investigation. The hospital that declared Rosangela dead said that they would cooperate and provide as much information to authorities and the family as they could. The results either aren't known or haven't been made public. That will do it for today's video. Which story was the most shocking to you? Put it down in the comments. Thanks for dropping in and spending time with me and make sure you subscribe if you want to join me for more crazy and true stories. While you're at it, give the like button some love. If you have a story suggestion or a topic you'd like to pass along, drop it down in the comments. Until next time, have fun and stay safe.